This is John from Remotify.io and in this video I'll be giving you an overview of how to use Control Surface Studio to create your own custom Control Surface scripts for Ableton Live. There are three main areas of Control Surface Studio. The Script Manager, this is where you add all of the mappings for your script. The Controller Manager is where you add the MIDI data for each input on your MIDI controller. And the MIDI controller area. This provides a visual representation of the MIDI controller which you are using. Let's dig deeper into each of these. All scripts are created and managed in the Script Manager. To display the Script Manager, click on the top icon in the left blue column you will see the title Script Manager displayed. Each item in the Script Manager is a separate control surface script in Ableton Live. You can add a new script by clicking on the plus icon in the top right corner of the Script Manager. A new script will appear with the name New Script and its settings menu will appear to the right. Here you can give your script a custom name. The controller menu is where you assign which controller to use along with your script. I will set mine to use Akai MIDI Mix. If you're looking for the save button, don't worry, all changes you make in the app are automatically saved. You can click the cog icon next to the script's name to open and close the script's settings menu. To add a new mapping to the script, click the plus icon to the right. The mapping menu will appear. Only one mapping type option is currently available, called Mode. If I click on the arrow next to the Mode mapping type, you can see that all other mapping types are currently greyed out. Click Mode to add it to your script. A new mode mapping has been added into the script manager. It is indented from the left slightly, telling us that the mode mapping is a child of the script above. You can show and hide a script or mapping's children by clicking the arrow immediately to the left. Think of a mode as a container within your script where all other mappings are added into. Only one mode is active at any one time, and you can switch the active mode. This gives you the ability to add multiple functions to your controller's inputs and switch between them. Watch our modes tutorial for details on how to use them. Click the modes add button to display the mapping menu again. As I've clicked on the modes add button this time, and not the scripts, there are now many more mapping types available to add. I'm going to add a tempo mapping. The tempo mapping has been added as a child of mode, and its settings form has opened. The minimum and maximum options allow you to set the BPM range for this tempo mapping. To change this, you can either click and drag them, or double click to manually enter a BPM value. I will set mine to 100 and 120 BPM, giving me a narrower and therefore more precise range for my knob. To assign an input from your controller to this mapping, you can either click it in the MIDI controller area, or select it in the controller input menu. And that's our first mapping completed. You can duplicate mappings by clicking the duplicate button on the right side of the mapping. And you can rearrange mappings by clicking and dragging the mapping icon. This works for groups of mappings also. To delete a mapping or group of mappings, click on the bin icon. To install your script into Ableton Live, click the orange install button next to the script name. If you haven't done so already, I recommend watching our setup tutorial to ensure that you have all of your settings configured correctly to work with Live. After installing your script, you can open Live, go to the MIDI link tab of the preferences menu, and see your custom script available as a control surface option. Then you can assign it to your MIDI controller and that's it. As you can see, I can now control the tempo from my MIDI controller without needing to map anything with my session. I can now switch sessions and still have it available and ready to use. So far I've been using a pre-built controller for the Akai MIDI Mix. If I want to use a controller which isn't listed in the script's controller menu, I will need to add it as a new controller. 
To add a new controller, switch to the controller manager. Click the add icon in the top right corner of the controller manager. This adds a new controller to the controller manager and displays its settings form. The square size, grid height and grid width are settings for the grid which you see in the MIDI controller area to the right. I'm going to keep them as their defaults. The other options below are related to LED feedback which we will cover in another tutorial. Add an input to your controller by clicking the add icon to the right. The controller input menu has appeared. Here I can select an input type to add. I'm going to add a button input type. As well as it appearing in the controller manager, a visual representation of the knob has also appeared in the MIDI controller area. You can move this around by clicking and dragging it. In the input settings menu, you can resize the button by using the radius option and set its shape to either square or round. The section below is where you add all of the MIDI data for that input. This must be the exact same data which the physical input on your MIDI controller sends when it is pressed or turned. If you know the data for this, you can input it manually, but there's a quicker and easier way to do it. If you haven't done so already, connect your MIDI controller to your computer. Then at the top, open the MIDI monitor menu and turn MIDI monitoring on. You will immediately see a list of all connected MIDI controllers. Pressing or moving an input on your MIDI controller will now do two things. First, you will see the latest MIDI message received section populate with MIDI data for the input. Secondly, all of the MIDI data for the open settings form will populate with the physical input's own MIDI data. As it's a button input type, the only option for control type is on off. To find out what the on off settings are for this input, I can reopen the MIDI monitor menu. When I press my button down, it sends a velocity value which is displayed next to velocity. This is my on value. And when I release the button, it sends a second velocity value. This is my off value. I'll add these as the on off settings for the input. The switch type can be set to either momentary or toggle, depending on the type of button you are using. That's it for the button input. I'll now add a knob input in the same way. And to make it look a bit more like a MIDI controller, I'll also add a container. I'll now attach my new custom controller to my script. To do this, I switch back to the script manager and open the settings form for my script. If I open the controller list, you can see that the new controller is added as an option. I'll select it and the controller displayed in the MIDI controller area changes to the new controller. This means that the script is now using my new custom controller and its MIDI data settings will be used for each mapping. I will now install my script again into Ableton Live, then reload live so it uses the updated version of the script. Now I just need to assign the script to the new MIDI controller and voila, my control surface script works with the new controller. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Control Surface Studio tutorials, where we will be going into detail with things such as tracks, devices, modes and custom LED feedback.